Jessica Collaher was a graduate of Texas State University. Jessica worked two jobs to pay off her student loans and pursue her dream of becoming an elementary school teacher. Her dreams would come to a devastating end when on September 7, 2009, she was found dead by her cousin in her car in the parking lot of a Walmart in Cedar Park, Texas. Her wallet and car keys were missing, and the car was covered in feces. Jessica had gone into the Cedar Park Walmart to buy dog food, and her behavior didn't look like she was there to meet anyone. However, the surveillance recordings showed that a man had walked out of the store just behind Jessica and followed her to her car. He then got into her car on the driver's side. Then, Jessica's car left the parking lot. It was back in the parking lot about an hour or so later, and a man was seen in the video recordings exiting the car and going towards a red or a maroon truck. Jessica drives into the Cedar Park shopping center, to shop at a local Walmart after dropping off her cousin Melanie at home. Minutes later another vehicle, a maroon truck, parks far away from the Walmart entrance at 1.44 am. Next Jessica is seen on camera walking into the Walmart, and the creepy man, from the maroon truck, is seen walking behind her after she walks through the entrance. It's possible it could be a coincidence, but the fact that it's so late in the evening, should be disconcerting for someone traveling alone. Rather than shopping inside of the store, the man walks into the restroom and disappears out of camera sight. After buying dog food, Jessica is seen exiting the Walmart, but just before she exits the store the same creepy man comes out of the restroom and begins to fast walk behind Jessica. He is just behind her in an attempt to catch up to her walking pace. Next Jessica exits the building, and is walking to her car, as seen on the parking lot surveillance footage. A couple of seconds pass before the same man in a baseball cap and blue jeans is also seen quickly walking behind her. He is closely heading toward her vehicle, even though he parked a lot further away from Jessica. The footage that would have shown the attack, is obstructed by a tree that blocks the camera's view. Detectives can only speculate that the mystery man walks to the rear of Jessica's car, when he steps into the same area obstructed by the tree's branches. A minute and a half pass before Jessica's car is turned on, reverses and then leaves the shopping center. Neither the man or Jessica are seen on the security footage until about an hour later at 2.52 am, when Jessica's car pulls back into the mall parking lot. It is left in a vacant parking spot, before the mystery man walks off to his truck. Later in the investigation it is revealed that Jessica's bank card is used at a local gas station for $75, at around 3.04 am, even though her car is still seen sitting in the shopping center parking lot. At daybreak, when a witness arrived at work on the morning of September 7, she spotted a naked Jessica crawling to the front seat to cover herself with a swimsuit cover-up. A while later, Jessica's cousin, Melanie Lopez Kilpatrick, found Jessica slumped over in the front seat. Hello? Cedar Park, now we're all what's happening. 911, please. I need emergency to the Walmart. 1431, 2009, Jessica's autopsy revealed that she had been strangled on the night of her murder, before succumbing to a heat stroke. Prosecutors say that Jessica was strangled twice, sexually assaulted, and left for dead in her car at the Cedar Park shopping center, and the strangulation, left her so severely brain damaged, that even though she survived the strangulation, she was unable to walk to any nearby stores or answer her cell phone for help. The CCTV footage revealed important details, not only about the murder suspect, but the maroon truck they drove into the shopping center. Using information belonging to the truck, specifically a large silver plate on the tailgate of the truck that says Chevrolet. Police were able to issue a bolo alert for the maroon truck. They also used surveillance footage from the nearby gas station, the suspect visited, after Jessica's strangulation, to get a better look at the suspect's face. With his image, now in the public's view, Police receive an anonymous tip on who the mystery man might be. The caller provides the name of Crispin Harmel, and when running his name in the police database, the police get a match, and locate dash cam footage of a traffic stop, 
that was conducted about three weeks prior to Jessica's death, involving the mystery man and his vehicle. When looking at the footage, police see the maroon truck, and wait for the driver to step out of the vehicle, when he does, he matches the description of the man caught on video, trailing behind Jessica and later using her bank card on CCTV footage. He was pulled over three weeks before Jessica's death for expired tags, with this breakthrough in information, police go to Crispin's home for further questioning. When they get there, they spot the same red truck they saw in the Walmart parking lot, with the modifications made to the tailgate. Crispin agrees to speak with authorities about his relationship with Jessica. This is embarrassing. So there is a website called LonelyHouseLifeHookups.com. I don't know if you ever heard this. It's kind of it's kind of like a dating site. I met Jessica through there. Me and Jessica were eyeing each other. It was through the no, internet was, site was, that y'all yes. were doing this IM thing? Yes, it was through the Lonely Wife hookup. I was like, well, why just meet you at Walmart? And that's where we met. Um, she's like, well, I'm going to go in there, uh, do shopping, and meet me at my car. When I'm done, she told me what she was driving, um, told me what she was going to be wearing. We went out for maybe about an hour. Um, went to a park over there off of uh, Co. Had our discreet, you know, no strings attached relationship. You know, when we were sitting there talking, you know, told her about how I stayed in my truck a lot, uh, struggling, gas money, stuff like that. And, um, She's like, well, here, you know, I leaned over, put it on my hand, put a pin number, said, well, I'll just take my debit card, I'll get gas. He explained that, she told him to just bring it back and leave it at my car at where I work at the HEB. Man, I probably drove around that parking lot for like 15 minutes trying to find her car, and I didn't see it. Where's the debit card? I chunked it. I didn't know what to do. You know, I have this credit card. Crispin claims he met up with Jessica for a hookup on a dating app, but this was later found to be false by surveillance video, showing that the two of them never interacted inside of the Walmart, and an examination of their computers and phones found no links to such dating websites or apps, like Crispin had claimed. After hearing about Jessica's murder, claiming he didn't want any involvement in the case, and after being questioned about his suspicious behavior on CCTV footage, Crispin becomes paralyzed with fear when he realizes that his actions were captured on camera. Jessica's autopsy revealed the horrifying details of just how she had died. The doctor who conducted the autopsy said in his testimony that Jessica had sustained defensive wounds on her hands and arms. She had been strangled twice and sexually assaulted. Jessica also suffered heavy brain damage due to strangulation, which had made it impossible for her to call anyone or ask for help when she was left in the parking lot after being severely assaulted. Yet, I had investigation evidence that she was alive mm -hmm. after the strangulation. A heat stroke caused by the heated interiors of the car with the doors and windows shut is what finally killed her. Harmel's statements to the police were full of inconsistencies, and he was ultimately found to have abducted Jessica, choked her with a seat belt before forcing her to drive to a park, where he had raped her and strangled her. He then drove back to the parking lot of the Walmart and left her there. In 2014, Crispin Harmel's first trial was ruled as a mistrial because the court accused the prosecutors of withholding evidence. The prosecutors revealed in the middle of the trial that the video footage from the day of the murder had timestamps. The timestamps contradicted the defense's timeline. In a court document, the judge agreed that the prosecutor knew about the timestamps but had not informed the defense about the same. In 2018, the case was taken to trial once again. Testimonies revealed that Jessica was not the type of person to have an account on sex websites. Another witness, 
Harmel's best friend's ex-fiancé, testified that Harmel was supposed to drop off the money he owed his best friend on the night before Jessica's death, but he didn't show up. In 2009, Harmel told the police that he had visited his friend's apartment and gone inside before he went to meet with Jessica. A forensic examination of Jessica's laptop, flash drive, and her phone's memory card revealed no evidence to prove Jessica and Harmel were in contact with each other as Harmel had claimed. And, several other witnesses provided statements that contradicted the many statements given by Harmel to the police in relation to Jessica's death. The defense argued that there was no evidence to prove sexual assault or brain damage after Jessica was strangled. The jury eventually found Harmel guilty of the capital murder of Jessica Callaher and subsequently sentenced him to life in prison without the possibility of parole. His post-sentence appeal was also rejected by the court. He is reportedly serving his sentence at McConnell Unit in Beeville, Texas. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see a certain video on something, Leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.